welcome to Bricktown Land, a model of everyday society. The people here are active all through the day and all through the night. Everyone's constantly in motion, and this requires a lot of fuel. For example, fuel is needed for their cars and their planes. Fuel is a store of chemical energy which keeps society moving. Even the people run on fuel. Food is like fuel for humans. But what does a fuel look like? Well, probably something like this. It's a long chain of carbon atoms. When these atoms come into contact with oxygen and are given a push, a huge amount of energy is released. And also the byproducts carbon dioxide and water. This is how a fuel works. This could be visualized as a ball on top of a hill. The fuel starts in a stable state, it's given a push, and energy is released, forming the byproducts. The difference in energy between the starting material and the byproducts is used by the people of Bricktown to power their society. But there's a huge problem on the horizon for the people of Bricktown. Lego oil, which is used to make Lego fuel, is running out. And what's much worse, Burning Lego fuel is releasing Lego carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is causing Lego global warming, leading to wild and unpredictable weather conditions. <laughs> to solve this problem, people turned to the Bricktown scientists, who were tasked with solving the energy crisis. The scientists' first idea was to use solar panels instead of fuel. Solar panels convert the energy we get from the sun into electricity and can power anything as long as the sun is shining. The problem is, as soon as the sun goes down, everything stops working. The scientist's second idea was to use solar panels to charge batteries. Get your batteries here, they're freshly charged. One battery, please. Batteries are a great way to store energy and are perfect for small scale electronics, such as mobile phones or if you're from the 90s, Nintendo Game Boys. Battery technology is constantly improving, but still they're too heavy for some large applications, such as powering aeroplanes. So is there any way that people could just make more fuel? One idea was to make more oil by building a time machine and using it to go back in time in order to kill more dinosaurs. Then they could be buried underground and in the future there'd be plenty more oil to go around to power society. Attempts to build a working time machine were unsuccessful, however. It turns out that it's a very complicated concept and it was just a stupid idea. I'm pretty sure someone was fired for that one. But their final idea was much more sensible. What if we can take the byproducts of burning fuel, carbon dioxide and water, give them some energy and turn them back into fuel, thus creating this renewable energy cycle? It would just be like pushing the ball back up the hill. It sounds simple, but right now the people of Bricktown can't do this. But plants have been doing this process all along and just didn't tell anyone. Plants can use the sun's energy to turn carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and sugar, i.e. fuel. This is called photosynthesis. The people then tried to interrogate the plants into revealing the secrets behind this process. How'd you do it? You better tell us or we'll feed you to the horse. Nom, nom, nom. Nay. This obviously didn't work. So instead, the people chose to study photosynthesis scientifically. Now the people of Bricktownland work on a concept called artificial photosynthesis, and the scientists are trying to develop a material that can turn carbon dioxide and water into fuel. This is actually the same goal as a number of human scientists. Research is in the Ryzen Laboratory at the University of Cambridge, as well as a number of other scientists around the world, are working on a way to make renewable and sustainable fuel that might be used to power our society in the not so distant future. Oh, no. oh, I don't think he could drive.